I've previously built some projects which mimic living creatures, such as robot dogs, an ornithopter, and some bipedal robots. These tend to be pretty complicated though, and in the case of the walking robots, they have many complex joints that have to be coordinated using inverse kinematics. But what's a simpler type of locomotion taken from nature that could be turned into a robot? The earthworm has a curious system of locomotion. It has four main muscle groups which cause sections of it to expand and contract, each section getting much thinner as it gets longer. The earthworm moves each section of its body forward in turn, cascading the motion down its body until the whole worm has moved forward, and then repeating it. This is known as a system of peristalsis, which from Wikipedia is defined as a radially symmetrical contraction and relaxation of muscles that propagates in a wave down a tube. Thanks to Trosson Robotics for sending me these linear actuators. These are IR Robot Mighty Zap linear actuators which work just like an RC servo, but the motion is linear instead of rotary. I wanted to make the most compact, expanding and contracting mechanism that would fit neatly around the servos, so I 3D printed all these linkages, and I'm just screwing them together with self-tapping screws to make joints. The idea is to make a concertina mechanism which gets thinner as it stretches out, and fatter as it gets shorter again. So there's several linkages in each part here, so that the whole thing can expand and contract as the servo linear action pushes it longer and shorter. The servos are going to fit between the two black points at the end, so I've used two 3mm pieces of steel to make pivot points, and that means I can make each side of the mechanism with the servo neatly sitting in the middle. So that fits just in with the pivot points that are provided with the servo, and then if we just screw up the two other sides, that makes the complete mechanism. The actuators work like normal RC servos, so I'm using the Arduino servo library to drive them. I'm using an Arduino Uno here. These particular actuators are the 12 volt variety, so I'm using a 12 volt LiPo to power the actuators themselves. As you can see, as the actuator gets longer and the mechanism gets longer, it also gets slightly thinner, and as it gets shorter it gets fatter again. So I've made four of them so we can replicate the four muscle groups in the worm, and I've just zip tied the sections together for now. There is some bend side to side, but there's no way of it actively steering at the moment, and obviously up and down it can bend freely where the joints are at the front and back of each mechanism. I've wired in and coded up all the servos, so now they all expand and contract at the same time, but we're going to need some more coordinated motion to get the worm to locomote. I placed the screwdriver at the starting point so we can see how much progress the worm makes, and to start with I'm trying a simple gate of just moving one segment at a time down the worm, which seems to be what earthworms do. So we can see, even though it's going slowly, it's actually making not too bad progress. The heavy cable isn't helping much though, because the worm doesn't weigh very much, so actually pushing against that bend in the cable is holding it up. It only helps slightly though if I try and hold the cable out of the way, or try and lead it along by the cable so the cable moves with the natural movement of the worm. I guess worms are pretty slow though, but this doesn't seem the most efficient way of moving. One of the problems could be that the bars linking the two sides of the worm can rotate, which means that they're acting like wheels and it's probably not got much friction with the ground. So I use super glue to glue them in place so that they glue to the inside of the mechanism, but we can still put the screw in and then screw it in and that means that the mechanism still moves freely around that point. I thought perhaps to give it even more friction with the ground, I'd add some rubber feet, which I stuck on to all of those bars, which of course now can't rotate, so the rubber feet should always face down. Well, that's much, much worse, because now the worm can't slide at all, which is I guess why worms look like they're quite slippery. So this isn't going to do, and we're going to have to take all the feet off and try something else. If I apply some load to the top of the worm though, so it has some more friction with the surface, then it actually makes it much more efficient, and you can see it's moving much further for the amount of contractions. So we need just the right amount of mass and just the right amount of friction to make the worm more efficient. So I tried adding some nuts to the top of each section to give it a bit more mass, and hopefully a bit more grip on the surface. It's still quite overwhelmed by pushing that cable though, and this doesn't seem to work well at all, so it's not really getting anywhere. 
So I thought it was time to try changing the gate, and now I've got multiple sections which expand and contract at the same time. So now we can see we're actually making quite a bit more progress, and this seems to be marginally more efficient, probably because there's more friction in the right place and less friction with the sections that are moving forward. So let's try speeding that up a bit here, and this isn't just the footage speeded up, I've actually speeded the worm up by making the delay between expanding and contracting each section shorter so it goes faster. And the worm's not doing too bad. You'll notice there's a funny twist in it though somewhere, probably where I've glued some of those cylinders together and I haven't put them on quite straight or the screws aren't in quite straight, so I'm not sure if this is the most efficient it could be. It does however seem to work okay though, and it makes okay progress. I guess worms move pretty slowly anyway, and this is probably as fast as it can go with multiple sections expanding and contracting at the same time. These particular actuators only have a stroke of 30mm though, which is the most they can move in a linear motion, so I thought it was time to try some bigger actuators. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is LG's QNED Mini LED TVs. The pioneering display combines a mini LED backlight with quantum dot nanocell colour technology. QNED delivers an all new TV experience with enhanced brightness, deeper blacks and brilliant colour. QNED delivers a greater level of detail and more accurate colour reproduction than LG LED TVs. Mini LEDs deliver a brighter and clearer image while unique dimming zones deliver precise backlight control and an ultra high contrast ratio. Quantum Dot Nanocell Colour Technology delivers a stunning picture with the combined power of both Nanocell Plus and Quantum Dot. LG QNED Mini LED TVs use the Alpha 7 Gen 4 AI processor, which uses a deep learning algorithm to analyse the picture and sound quality for automatic optimization. And QNED Mini LED TVs include Dolby Vision IQ, which adjusts picture settings based on the director's intent of how the picture should look as well as the room's ambient light levels. And a feature I really like is Filmmaker Mode, which turns off motion smoothing and preserves the original aspect ratio, colours and frame rates. This accurately delivers the director's original vision of the content so you can experience the film the way they intended. Check out the link in the video description for more info on LG's QNED Mini LED TVs. I've got some big high tech servos here which are the HS805BB Plus servos and these are pretty hefty, so compared to a normal servo, they're actually quite giants. I'm planning to put these on the actual rotary part of the mechanism though, instead of making a linear motion with them, so that means we should get far more motion. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So this time the servo is powerful enough to make the corner of one of the mechanisms using its rotary motion. So if we put the whole mechanism together then we can see that we get far more expansion and far more contraction as the mechanism gets longer and shorter, as well as the whole thing being much bigger, so altogether the whole worm will be bigger and it should make more progress. And of course again I've built four sections and linked them all together, so now we can see as it expands and contracts that section gets much thinner and gives us quite a lot more ground clearance so there'll be less friction as it locomotes. This time my worm's big enough to fit all of the electronics on board so there's no trailing cables. I've got an Arduino Uno which is going to control the servos, and I'm powering them from a 2 cell LiPo which is good to power all four of them at once. And I'm using a USB boost bank to power the Arduino so it runs from a separate power supply. So I've coded the worm up to move with the most simple gate which is just going and expanding one section which cascades down the body starting with the head and ending with the tail. And we can see that it makes quite good progress and it's got quite a long reach on each of those sections although it could reach slightly further. You can still see that sometimes the sections are slipping backwards particularly on the very end of it at the tail. You can see that sometimes it grips okay and sometimes it slips so it could still be more efficient in its locomotion, but altogether it seems to be making good progress. 
I'm just moving the servos to fixed positions on fixed timers, but you'll notice that they decelerate as they get to their target, so they don't start and stop all of a sudden. I'm using a filter for this, which I did a whole video on, with an animatronic head with some animatronic eyes, to show how to filter servo motions in real time, using a filter which basically doesn't allow the servo to move too quickly. It bookmarks the previous value and uses around 90% of that value, and only 10% of the new value on each cycle, so the value can't change too quickly, and we get a nice smooth motion. I was pretty happy with that until I tried it on a smooth surface, and when there's no friction really worth speaking of at all because it's smooth plastic on tiles, we can see the worm doesn't really move anymore, it just stays on the spot, skidding around. If I come and I try and add effectively a ratchet to the section, so on the back section I continually block it as it moves forward, and I don't let it slide backwards, then the worm moves forward again. So if we were to do this with all of the sections, it would be much more efficient in its locomotion. Perhaps we could add a ratchet wheel on each of the orange sections where the servo's mounted. I thought I'd try the living room rug which has a much deeper pile and therefore offers more friction to the sections of the robot which are touching the ground. When the sections lift off the ground and elongate and stretch forward, they still slide forward a little bit when they're touching the ground at the end of the cycle, but the ones which are touching the ground all of the time and pushing backwards very rarely slide backwards, so that gives us much better locomotion. According to the Wikipedia article, worms do in fact have claw-like bristles on certain parts of their body, which act like a little ratchet, which allow the worm to grip the ground on the sections that have expanded and are fatter, while the other sections are elongated and push forward. So this would be a bit like having a ratchet wheel on each of those big orange sections, so it doesn't slide backwards anymore, and would allow us to grip the ground no matter what the surface. Who thought worms could be this interesting? I've quite enjoyed this project. I think I'm going to try and make another one which is slightly bigger, although I'd actually like to make a really big one that could roam around at events and so on. But actually the features we need I think really are some way of steering. So perhaps if we had two actuators per segment, one on each side, we could make one side longer than the other on all of the four segments, and then we'd be able to steer and go around corners and that sort of thing, and also add some sort of ratchet wheel on each section, which is a bit like the little bristles on a worm, which it turns out they have anyway, so that it's much more efficient in its locomotion. I'm not sure how big I'd make it, maybe two or three metres long and kind of a big sort of thing, a couple of feet high, something like that. Maybe made of metal or aluminium extrusion with big chunky joints and like wiper motors or something to drive it so we've got some extra mass to sort of hold it on the ground so it doesn't bow up in the middle. That might be quite good fun. Anyway, for now, I'm going to publish the CAD and code. So if you want to make your own or have a go at programming a different gate, then you can. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description below. And YouTube channel members and patrons can get access to all the videos up to a week early, as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. All right, that's all for now.